I know I sound like a broken record sometimes, but I am aware that I have to keep repeating things because people just don't fucking listen. Uh, I know they don't listen because I say something and I keep saying it until I'm blue in the fucking face and then people ask me the question straight after. Uh, so I will say this again for the 150th time. I am very behind in my email. So um, what people are doing is they are emailing me they're not getting a response, so they're sending another email. They're not getting a response to that, so they're getting on Twitter DM and messaging me there. One guy's even now on fucking YouTube private message, for Christ's sake. Um, if I'm not answering your message, it's because uh, I am very, very behind. My inbox has now well over 1,500 emails in it, and I would say that I spend probably an hour a day on email after I finish trading and most days I get in more than I can answer because you have to remember that a lot of the questions I get are quite lengthy sometimes in the one hour I answer two or three emails people are asking me what do you think of this setup what do you think of that setup and it holds everyone back but I want to go through emails in order so just be patient I am never going to be putting email before trading so from when I wake up until things start to die down in the bund I'm pretty much focused on the market or if the market's quiet I'm focused on statistics and working on my edge and I work on email after I know people sometimes say well, it doesn't sound like you're fucking busy because you're on Twitter talking shit all day long the one thing I would say is that I find Twitter quite cathartic um, it allows me to have a rant at some of my extremely irritating students that really piss me off because they won't do what I tell them um, and for me, Twitter is a process by which I can stay sane during the trading day. So I know it might look weird that I'm saying I'm so behind in my email and yet you're getting a constant barrage from Twitter, but that's the way it is. Um, so there you go. We're not going to go over anything groundbreaking tonight. We're just going to look at what you guys should be fucking doing if you're losing money. We're going to concentrate on some simple things that you can do, most of them revolving around a journal, that will make a difference to your bottom line uh, if you are sitting there on a daily basis and not getting anywhere. Um, I am, as you guys know, moving into backing students um, and this is driving me even more fucking crazy than I already was because now I'm seeing firsthand uh, what people are doing wrong. Before, you know, I was just on the other end of email so I could teach people what I'm doing and get occasional emails with feedback. Now I'm actually watching people perform live and the shit that people do and the fact that they just will not fucking try and improve is driving me up the wall. Um... So I had a bit of a rant this morning on Twitter and I'm going to have, I guess, a little bit of a rant tonight. But I know I offended people earlier this morning when I said I can tell you one thing categorically. The reason most people fail is mainly because they're fucking lazy and stupid. And, you know, I know that a lot of people will take offense at that because some people genuinely are trying and the market's hard and they're not making money and I'm not speaking for everyone but I can honestly tell you guys as a mentor the vast majority of people I deal with could be profitable but they just won't fucking put the work in and they come up with bullshit excuse after bullshit excuse um, I mean I hear crap all day long oh filling in a journal takes too long so what are you gonna do just stare at a fucking chart and continue to do the same thing each day that hasn't worked for the last six months but apparently it's going to suddenly start working and like the typical turd will come and they'll say to me I keep getting out and taking 30 pips and then it goes on to run you know for a hundred and I just keep getting out early and so you know I'll hear that a few times and I'll say to them okay so what are you doing about that and they will literally look as puzzled as if I've asked them to solve the fucking law of the universe. And this is what it comes down to, having a journal and constantly seeking to improve. If you've got a problem, you've got to look at what that problem is, why you've got it, and what you're going to do about it. Because problems don't just fucking solve themselves, not in this game. Um, so you have to put the effort in and as I say what certain students do is they come to me with a problem like I'm getting out too early and they just won't go away and do the work but then two weeks later they'll come back and they'll say oh you know I still feel like I'm getting out of trades too early um, and as I say I can't speak for everyone but I feel that I can speak for a 
pretty goddamn big percentage when I say that people are generally lazy. Um, probably a bit stupid too. So uh, let's see how many people will log out of this webinar now after I said that. The key question is what you can see uh, in front of you on the screen now. Um, you should be asking yourself this every day. What have you done today to improve as a trader? You might not feel today that you've made tangible progress, but have you fucking done something that is taking a step towards improving? Uh, and I try to ask myself this question every single day day. It doesn't matter whether you've been trading 17 years like I have or you placed your first ever trade three minutes ago. You never stop learning in this game. And with that in mind, there are three questions which are on the screen that you should have in the front of your mind um, when you are reviewing your performance. How can I make more money from my winners? How can I lose less money from my losers? And how can I generate more winning ideas? Uh, to put it in a simpler format, what am I going to do this month, this week, today, better than I did last month, last week, or yesterday? Um, to get the answer to these questions, in my opinion, requires a record or a journal and the time to diligently study it and learn from it. I would suggest that you get Edgewonk, which is what I'm bringing on the screen. This isn't a blank version of Edgewonk that's not filled in. This is Edgewonk 2.0. It doesn't run in Excel anymore. Uh, it's like the fucking Lamborghini of journals, but maybe you're a tight ass and you don't want to pay the money. Um, for the longest amount of time, I was using this that I'm bringing on the screen now. It is a basic journal and it doesn't even fill things in for you as in calculate it itself. I would go in and actually calculate personally. That's how crap I am with Excel. But I built this a long, long time ago um, and that was my basic trade journal that I used for years and years to improve um, and I'm not going to go through what's in this tonight uh, but I'm actually happy to send that out to people if they want it but it's got a lot of the standard stuff that you put in a trading journal such as you know the details of your trades your entry details your exit details and a few other things that it's worthwhile tracking at the outset to make initial improvements and I'll talk about these uh, tonight but the vital thing to realize is there is a huge and I mean huge fucking difference between recording and analyzing your trades some people spend all their time writing down their trades you know in a book or in a blog in an excel sheet or wherever and then believe it or not they don't review them so if you have a record and you don't look at it frequently you might as well not have one it's not a list of trades to stick in a bleeding folder on your computer to read back on it one day like a fucking diary it's there for one reason and one reason only which is to make you a better trader and if you're winning it's there to make you more money and if you're losing it's there to turn it around and make sure that you can perform and start making money so I find that quite simply a journal will help to constantly improve on what I do to get better results than my peers and also to discover new patterns that I've not been taught. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few suggestions of things tonight that you can take a look at. And you really can use them to improve, but it is hard work. OK, it takes time. Um, I'm constantly battling, particularly with one student and saying to him, stop fucking analyzing the Forex during the day. Go back through your previous trades and see what you can learn from them. You've been looking at the bloody chart of the euro dollar every fucking day for the last six months and you haven't made any money. Why are you going to start making money tomorrow? You might have a winning day, you might not, but why are you suddenly going to go on a winning streak? What do you think is going to happen? It hasn't happened for the last six months. There's a flaw in what you're doing and you've got to fix it. So play around with ideas, generate new ones, refute them, think outside the box, on top of the box, inside the bloody box, but essentially coming up with ways to improve should literally keep you awake at night and if it doesn't, well I don't think you're ever going to be a great trader, that's my opinion. First off, let's have a look at how we can make more money from our winners and here is four ideas. So this is one thing that I encourage everybody to do which is analyze the difference between active management on your trades versus walking away. Now a lot of people will get in trades with stops and targets but they won't see the trade through to target. 
Now that's fine. Sometimes you'll put a trailing stop, you'll get stopped out. Or sometimes you get in a trade and you have an original target and you think, oh, I don't like this and you, something in the price action gets you out. Sometimes it was the right thing to do, sometimes it wasn't. But what you want to do is you want to throw up a column in Excel and have a look what is the difference between what you achieved on the trade if you're actively managing it versus what would have happened if you did not touch the trade at all and simply left it to hit either stop or target no matter how long it took. And as I've said so many times, you know, the answer to this question is of utmost importance because if your record clearly shows that over the long run you're screwing things up by managing trades, you've just found your own personal holy grail. Because you know, if you find that you can make more money through less work, surely that's what everybody wants. And it is less work physically and emotionally to be able to walk away. So not everyone is going to find that they make more money walking away, but I know some people will. And again, these are the people that I see on a daily basis that put in targets and they manage to get out of the trade so early and then keep coming back to me and saying, oh, this trade hit target, that trade hit target, and I wasn't in the thing. So have a look at this. I'll show you a trade, and it's only one trade, but it's quite interesting, that I know a student took in the Bund, and it was on this day here, this bearish engulfing. Um, and after it had faked out the top of the range here with the swing failure, we were looking for it to come down and take this low and actually try and probe this gap. Um, and so typically with my strategy after a bearish engulfing like that, I'm going to come in, I'm going to sell the first retracement to uh, a level and look to get short. Now, this trader sold 13s, which was here. Okay, so this is the lows and this is the last low pre-breakdown after the bearish engulfing and they put a stop above this high there. So just above that thrust candle and they didn't get stopped out. It traded one tip before their stop. Now, I don't really agree with that stop. I think that's very, very tight. Mine was a lot wider. But forget about where mine was. This student sold the 13s with a four tick stop and their target was 187 ticks, which was a probe all the way down on the H1 time frame down through this low. So they're looking for an insane 47R. Now they only got 21 ticks out of that trade, despite looking for 187. So they only captured 11% of the opportunity. But this is something then that you want to start looking at because they're coming to me and saying wow I had such a great chance to make money and I messed it up sure it was only one trade that active management got them out early but what's happening over time because is this something that is repeating itself um, interestingly enough the prop firm I'm in at the moment when they look at our metrics I can tell you that the opportunity that you capture is one of the most important things that they look at and I've been told one of the most important metrics engaging uh, whether you're a good trader or not. Uh, so anyway, getting out early is just one of those potential problems where people always seek the easy way out to blame their psychology. And they start saying shit like, oh, I'm so psychologically screwed up. I keep coming out my trades so early because I get scared. I get impatient. Oh, fuck, I better read trading in the zone again. The reason you came out early is because you do not categorically know over a large sample size that holding is the right thing to do, right? If you know that and you're getting out too early, you don't need a fucking psychologist. It's quite simple. You're an idiot. Most of the traders I talk to on a daily basis are trading full time. They still don't know if they need a shit or a haircut during the day. It's ridiculous. Um... Anyway, that's point one. It doesn't take long to do because all you've got to do is if you use targets, go through and see what happened. You can learn a hell of a lot from that relatively quickly. But you might be the kind of trader that doesn't use targets. All right. If you're the kind of trader that doesn't use targets, then you're going to not be able to do this so easily. So this is the next thing that you can look at. How much of the opportunity are you generally capturing? Um, some people moan and they say, oh, you know, I had a 50 pip target and I got out at that target, which was good. But then the market went on to run an extra 250. There's no point moaning about this. You've got to look at what you're doing to actively change this. Um, so I was talking to 
someone recently about my euro dollar trade on election night and you know we've been over this I called it I think it was in the last webinar we held we know the probabilities for a gap fill I'll talk about this a bit later tonight uh, but we've broke out we've accepted above there we come back with a rounded retest we had a 61% fib there at the time 67% uh, chance that the gap was going to close before my stop was hit and we get this sharp move now I actually closed this for 150 pip winner 5R on the gap close and because of the election extravaganza we shot 150 pips further and some people would say to me are oh, you got out too early yes in that trade but obviously I measure this metric over time if I found out I was getting out early on a lot of my trades you better believe I'm going to do something about it but anyway if you find out that you are getting out early ie you've got targets but your targets are not optimal then what you want to do is go back over the trades that you've taken and try a variety of theoretical management techniques on those trades. I mean, you don't need to know anything about Excel to be able to do this. Just pull up an extra column in Excel, look at the trades you've done, and maybe add a, an idea like, for example, well, on these trades, what would have happened if I trailed my stop behind the last deep swing? Or I used a 30 pip trailing stop. I mean, this kind of stuff is boring because you're crunching numbers. And someone said to me today, when I'm doing that, I'm not spending time looking at the chart of the market, i.e. I'm not making any money. This was the most fucking dense thing I've ever heard. Because when they're looking at the bloody chart, they're not making any money either. They're losing it. So what you're doing is you're looking at this to get better. Um... So that's something that you can do as well. The MAE is a really quick fix to improve on your trading. Um, probably one of the most important things. Surprised how many people still don't know about this. It stands for Maximum Adverse Excursion. Um, it's quite simple. Look at your winning trades. How far do they go offside before they become winners? So I am currently looking at uh, a guy's performance record and I'm looking at the MAE first on his trades because I've noticed this guy is using massive stops like 100 pip stops um, and that's one of the reasons he's losing at the moment because he's got quite a high strike rate but he's got 100 pip stops sometimes even more as high as 150 and he's grabbing anywhere from 10 to 30 pips so his strike rate's great his payoff is dog shit and he's not making any money. What I want to see is, is that large stop size necessary? What happens if we halve the stop? And the way we can work that out is the MAE. So, you know, if we find, let's say that on his winning trades, they never go more than, say, 25 pips against him, well, then we can reduce the stop. So we improve our payoff. Um, and it's just something you know to think about because it, again it is a quick fix and it's very very simple to do you know just create the column crunch the numbers and for a second let's assume the opposite let's say you use a 50 tick stop and every single trade you take went against you by 42 ticks but they all eventually reversed and a hundred percent of your trades win right that's right you didn't take a single loser I would say to you congratulations on your hundred percent strike rate but your entry is obviously shit if you use a 50 tick stop and every trade goes 42 fucking ticks against you your entry shit improve it study the different areas that price went to why are you getting drawdown on your entries this is interesting enough how I found about the last high or low once the market breaks out of an area. So if we get an area like this, let's say, and we break out and we accept above, I used to basically draw a level at the high end of the range and get long there. And what I found over time is that I was getting drawdown on a lot of those entries. I was taking heat and I looked at my trades. I had screenshots of all of them, thank God. Um, and one thing I noticed is that a lot of the time the market was gravitating back to the last high that price made now you've got to obviously look at all your trades your winners and your losers but what I was finding is it was gravitating back to that area and that therefore became a better place to get involved every single thing that I do in my trading comes from the fact that I started with the basic premise and then worked on it from my journal to improve it so you know with a situation like this is why it's quite important to have screenshots um, all right next risk allocation Right, risk allocation is really, really important as well. 
um, look at the different strategies that you trade is there a certain strategy that's performing better than the others if so why don't you look at putting more money into that strategy I actually vary the risk that I use in my trading across different strategies I say to traders when they begin all trades should be taken at the same size uh, risk of account because what a lot of people do is um, this very what I call idiotic thing which is where they just randomly change the size based on gut instinct so they say oh I really like this setup I'm gonna do six times the fucking size on it and I say to them what's particularly good about this setup and they'll say I just like it no stats on it nothing like that they have no idea that that setups any better than any other but they just like it um, and their size is all over the shop. I mean, that's another thing that you can incidentally look at. What happens if you don't vary your size? If you're one of these traders that does, if you vary your size on gut instinct, level your size out in your journal, have a look what would be the result if every trade was taken at fixed 1% or fixed 2%. There's so much you can do to improve your performance. You might have an inkling of where you're going wrong and then you can work on it. But risk allocation, again, is something to look at because you know, if you've got two strategies, and let's say one is having a 50% strike rate and it makes a 2R, and the other one has a 68% strike rate and it has a 3.5R, why would you be risking the same amount of money on each strategy? It doesn't make sense. This clearly has a better expectancy, all things considered. So little things like that do make uh, a difference over time. Okay, so next how can I lose less money from my losers does price action link your losers if you've got screenshots is certain things happening that links your losers a lot of people for example ask me when I buy a breakout of a level and I always trade on a 60 minute time frame if I get a 60 minute close down through my level does that mean that the trades less likely to work well I can tell you no based on my stats but how about you go away and research that Again, you'll often have an inkling, we'll talk more about this later, of certain things and you want to then come in and test them. Um, is there a certain time of day that you cannot trade? Maybe the vast majority of your losers are trades that are taken overnight because they can't be managed properly. I know a lot of guys that say that they lose money in the US session and clean up in the morning. So what are you going to do about that? Sit there in the US session every day and lose money? No. Make money in the morning, go home for the day. I mean, you've got to find out what's working for you and play to your strengths. Is there a certain day of the week that causes problems? It's always worth checking. Over my career, I have heard so many people say that Fridays are difficult. And I found this totally to be a red herring. Uh, this year, 2016, and we're 11 months in, I can tell you that Tuesday and Fridays are my absolute best day and my worst day is Wednesday. Now, these stats are meaningless when I'm throwing them out to you guys. I don't want you guys thinking, fucking hell, Tom does his arse on a Wednesday, so I'm not going to trade Wednesdays. They might be completely different to you. But that's why I don't want you to get too hung up on me and my trading, but just take a look at your own. Um, another thing, I get these questions every year about July. July is consistently poor for me over the years, and I've seen this echoed among many professionals. Too many for it to be a coincidence. That's why I usually sit July out. You've got to take a holiday at some point. Why would I want to sit there and do my ass if it's a difficult period? And invariably, every July, I see somebody come along and say, Oh, I've had a really good July. Or if you can't trade July, there's something wrong with you. Fucking great for them. If they can make money in July, fantastic. But there are many, many professional traders that do find that period difficult. I'm one of them. And you do the analysis. It shows you that you're not strong at that time. And you forget about it. You don't get involved in the market just because somebody else says it's a great time for them. Fuck them. Are there particular markets you do badly in? Funnily enough, I mean, this was just the last month, but this was my record from prop. Hmm. Over $20,000 made on the month on the rates, but tiny negative on cash FX. Now, that's just one random month. Um, usually I do well in cash FX and the rates but imagine this was your record over time it might be something that you can learn from I think I've told this story before about the guy I used to work with in prop that 
did his arse in the Dax. Um, he did his arse in the Dax from morning till night. He just couldn't seem to get the hang of it. And uh, interestingly enough, this was a guy that used to pin up pictures of mansions and Lamborghinis and you know villas in Spain and all the rest of it. And he said, you know, he was attracting money into his life. I mean, seriously, fuck off. Um, but anyway, this guy could not trade the DAX. So one day they said to him, listen, mate, why don't you try another market? So they get him in the Bund. And suddenly he starts making money. He's doing more or less the same thing, but he's suddenly making money in the Bund. OK, two weeks go by. He's cleaned house in the Bund. What do you think this guy does at the end of that fortnight? The silly bastard goes back to the DAX. And I said to him, mate, honestly, what are you doing? And you know what he said? He said, the Bund is so boring. It's slow. Now, the DAX, my God, that DAX is volatile. It moves. If you get it right in the DAX, you can make so much money. Yes, cunt. But you aren't getting it fucking right in the DAX. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's the most stupid thing I've ever heard in my life. But this is what people do. Don't think this is a joke. Do not underestimate how dense people can be. I know I sound like a bit of a cunt now. I know it. Because I sound arrogant, but I've seen this shit for so long and I'm dying seeing it from people that tell me they desperately want to make money but are acting so idiotic. You know, if you trade one market and you do well in it, who gives a fuck if it's slow and it's boring? The aim is to make money. Um... In terms of losing less money from your losers, maybe it's uh, something as simple as the fact that you've got a clear set of rules and uh, yet you don't seem to be following them. Everybody, I'm sure, knows about the Demon Finder by now. Use this Demon Finder. Uh, it will help you. Very quickly, what you're going to be doing is ticking the boxes as you make certain mistakes and seeing which demons are outpacing the rest so you can eliminate them. This is a very nice visual way to find out where you're going wrong. You can actually change these things. Not everyone will have these demons. Um, but again, speaking about the guy uh, that I was uh, analysing his performance only today, he will frequently be ticking poor risk-reward trade since he's using 100, 150 pip stops and gunning for 30 pip max. Useless risk-reward. But, you know, again, um, you can tick the demon and eliminate that. So let's move on to how can I generate more winning ideas. The key thing to understand here is the process of testing things out. Okay, um, This is my trading desk that you can see on the left hand side of the screen. Um, well, it was before I moved house but it still looks identical just in a different house. And here just to the side of me I have a book called Bright Ideas that you can see here and in this whenever I read something about the market or I see something which makes me think aha I would like to know more about this I write it down and I stick it in here for testing at a later stage so let me give you an example let's say uh, I don't know I'm in the dollar yen and it's Sunday night and I want to be a buyer on the dollar yen but the dollar yen gaps up 50 pips. I might think to myself, hmm, well I want to buy, but should I buy it here or should I wait for the gap close and then buy? What I need to know is what's the probability of that gap closing. I don't fucking know it, so I stick it in the bright ideas so that next time that happens, I do know it. Good traders that have knowledge that you don't have, it didn't fucking just come to them. You know, the fact that I know the statistics of an open drive in the Bund, or the fact that I know the probabilities of the Bund going up uh, between 4 and 9 p.m. on month ends, or the fact that I know the statistics for the Euro-dollar gap closing on a Sunday. I wasn't born with this bloody knowledge. I've gone through hours and hours and hours and hours of working it out. So I get ideas, I put them in here, and I test them at a later stage. So this is basically the process. Formulate an idea to test. Begin testing it, collecting stats by hand. I try to spend one hour every single day, minimum, testing something out. And as I'm gathering stats, I get new ideas and I retest them with other variables. And usually this is done to try and manage risk. So let me explain what I mean by that. Um, when I heard about gaps filling in Forex, I was very intrigued because I heard people saying that uh, going against the gap was free money because all gaps fill. 
So like most people, I kind of thought, do they? Do all gaps fill? Surely that can't be true. So I started going through and looking, have all gaps in the euro dollar filled? That was my primary question. No idea how I'm going to trade it, whether there's even going to be anything to do there. But I just want to answer that question. Have all gaps in the euro dollar filled? And I went through and I found out that uh, over you know, my back testing period, there were, I think, two gaps that had never filled. So I've answered the question, no, they might all fill one day. But after years, there are still some open gaps. But then I start thinking, well, hang on, a lot of them do fill. And that then leads me on to the next process is, well, what is the probability of a successful trade fading the gap under certain stop sizes? If there's a 50 pip gap and I use a 50 pip stop, I wonder what my strike rate would be. And I start testing it. Now, I've posted these stats before. I'll post them again, just so you know. But this is based on all the work that I do out of hours um, and it's tiring it's very very tiring especially because I hand count everything but in the euro dollar if you have say uh, a 50 pip gap and you enter at exactly 10 p.m. which is the open for FX Pro which is the broker I use to collect the data and you go against the gap so i.e. if we gap down you buy if we gap up you sell and you use a stop of half the gap size so if you used a 25 pip stop you'd have a 55 percent chance of a winner i.e. the gap closing before getting stopped out if you used a 50 pip stop on a 50 pip gap you'll have a 67 percent strike rate and if you used a 100 pip stop on a 50 pip gap i.e. you get half an R then you'll have a 75 and a half percent chance of a profit and you know here's just the stats that I've just taken from Excel now I use that in my trading that's how I used it to capture 5R the other night because I'm buying a level with Fib Confluence and I know that I have in the way of my stop this probability of a successful trade a lot of people were coming out to me incidentally that night and saying oh, it's election night it will be different you don't think I've run these stats through elections before and people will say, oh, this time it's different, it's Trump. You know, fine. If you want to think that, think that. But at the end of the day, I've traded this strategy through fucking bailouts of countries. This is a mechanical strategy. Regardless of what is going on, if you look back over the years, these are the strike rates. And if you don't feel comfortable trading it, if you don't feel comfortable trading it, but that black and white is what the stats are, I use them in my trading. Um... Another winning idea, you know, a lot of prop traders trade the month ends in the bund. I'm not going to go over this strategy in too much detail, but if you buy the bund uh, at 4 p.m. on the last trading day of the month and you put a stop below that hourly candle, i.e. the 3 to 4 p.m. low, you have a strike rate of 51%. Um, you're 569 ticks up and 30.75 R over a decade for a trade that literally takes a few minutes to do once a month. Um, interestingly enough it's lost for three months in a row and people say oh my god it's lost for three months in a row now does it mean that the edge is going to stop working I know guys are saying they're not going to trade this fucking edge anymore well you never know to be fair if an edge has stopped working you don't know that until after the event until it has stopped working but I'm certainly not going to second guess myself and you've got to be armed with the information people are shitting themselves because it's lost three times in a row now look at the strike rate 51%. If you've got a 51% strike rate, what's your probability of three losing trades in a row? 99.8%. Oh my God, I'm so surprised it's had three losers in a row. Maybe that means it stopped fucking working. You need to grow a pair. Literally grow a pair. Look at this mathematically. I wouldn't be fucking surprised if I had seven losers in a row. I know I've got a, pretty much a one in three chance of it. This is why I like stats, so I'm aware of these different things. Um, so if you want to generate more winning ideas, of sure, you can test things out. Um, looking for patterns in your losers is a nice way to basically uh, come up with ideas. I've told this story before, which is how I came up with the swing failure pattern that I trade. Uh, it's a very good pattern, and I came up with that by looking through a student's trades. Um, I found that uh, this guy was basically buying breaks to swing highs, selling breaks to swing lows on a four hourly chart. 
and sometimes he was getting it right, sometimes he was getting it wrong. And I looked through this guy's trades in detail because he couldn't be bothered to. And I tried to find what was linking his winners and what was linking his losers. And I found it made a huge difference if he's buying it through a swing high, whether we close through that swing high. So if we get this kind of situation here and he buys through here, if it closed through that high, there was a good probability that he was going to get a winner. If it failed to close through that high, a lot of the time it was going to stop him out. And I looked at this and I thought, holy shit. So basically, if we fail to close through a high, there's a good chance it's going to retrace. Now, you guys might be thinking, uh, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. You know, it's a failure at a prior high. But you'd be surprised. Most people don't know this stuff. I didn't know this stuff. But I found it myself through a journal and not even my own journal. Um, secondly, a quick way to work out if you can get more winning ideas is how many trades are you actually missing? Um, I know we can all do the hypothetical, oh, I would have done this, I would have done that. But seriously, how many trades are you missing? And you have to be fair here and you count those that would have been losers alongside those that would have been winners. Um, there's three steps to solving any problem. Know what the problem is, know why you've got this problem and then come up with the solution. The important step that everybody misses is why have they got the problem? Most people just think, what is the problem? How can I fix it? Unless you know why you've got it, you can't fucking fix it effectively. So if you say, well, the problem is I'm missing trades, then why am I missing trades? Is it because you weren't aware that they were setting up, i.e. you need some kind of alert system? Um, Funnily enough, I've just arranged with a group of students to monitor the markets pretty much 24-7. Because I find myself that I miss trades sometimes looking at multiple markets, we've set up a little group and we're all looking at a couple of markets each to make sure we don't miss anything. It's one way of doing things. Maybe you've got some friends that trade the same strategy that can alert you to things. Um, I've mentioned this one before, which is the point that I guess I'll bend on tonight. I had a friend who used to sit in my live room this was many many years ago and one day I was looking to trade a level and I pulled the order at the last minute that sound familiar market was going parabolic into a level and I pulled the order I cancelled it and the market reacted right off that level and it went on to have become a big winner that I missed and I was a little bit annoyed and this guy pipes up on the private message with Tom you know every time you do that the trade works right and I said yeah yeah and I shrugged it off and he then went on to say no seriously of the last 37 times you've done it 32 were winners and I'm making the numbers up off the top of my head here but it was something like that and when he put that I thought there's no way he's kept track that diligently especially of my trading and I said to him are you fucking serious and he said, do you not journal cancelled trades? And I said, well, no, actually, I don't. And he just simply said, you should. And now, what do you see me doing? You see me on Twitter having a rant and swearing at people and saying, don't cancel your orders when the market goes vertical into a level. Now, where the fuck did I come up with that from? I always say, don't fade the drift fade a sharp move why because i was the silly bastard that kept cancelling all my orders because the market went vertical and i had to have a student show me that i was doing the wrong thing this guy incidentally is a multi-millionaire trader now um typical example of that will be gold i haven't got an example of the drift but the in the gold i sold 1306 uh which was here Okay, this level here, right into FOMC. I'm sure you guys remember it. Beautiful level. You could not ask for a better trade than this. Past ATR, straight into the last low pre-breakdown. Literally sold the high in gold. Everybody acting like I'm fucking Soros. This is the most obvious trade in the world. There's nothing clever about this. It's a market that's ramping. And everybody's so fucking scared because gold's been going vertical. And they don't want to fade it because every turd's on Twitter saying, don't fade the moves, you know, don't stand trying to pick up fucking pennies in front of a steamroller. Uh, there's a lot of people that will tell you you can't do something because they can't do it, by the way. 
Uh, but anyway, that was a nice trade and, and you're basically fading a sharp move. That incidentally was typical of a trade that I would have cancelled uh, back in the day because I'd have gone, oh my God, it's FOMC and oh my God, it's going vertical, big green candles, shit myself and pull it. Anyway, back to the guy that was telling me about this. I'll tell you something about him. And again, it's a story that I've told before. Um, we're out in a bar and he gets uh, a notification from Twitter. And he starts scrambling around to place a trade. And I'm like, okay, what's the setup? And he looks at me and he's looking at his phone and he's, he's tapping the trade in and he says, I don't know what the setup is. Well, that's the, just the weirdest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. So I'm like, well, what are you doing then? You're getting in the market, there's no setup? And he's like, oh, Scott sold oil, so I'm going long. I'm like, who the sweet fucking Christ is Scott? He's like, oh, consistent loser. Last 116 trades has a 60% strike rate with a 0.15R. Negative expectancy, so I fade everything he does. I'm looking at this guy and I'm like, are you fucking for real? I will never forget this as long as I live. He pulls out a black book. He has names of traders, many of them from my live room, but other guys from forums with their handles, some people on Twitter. And he has breakdowns of their entire performance. Now, this was a pro poker player that used to do the same thing with other poker players. You know, he'd come on and say, oh, this guy's, you know, American. He's got a lot of money. He always comes on pissed on a Saturday night. So I make sure I'm in front of my PC at 1 a.m. to completely rape him. But he knows about all these guys, what their expectancy was, all the guys that were calling trades with entry stops and targets. And he was literally just fading them. And guys, I can't make you believe me, but I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart, this guy made several hundred grand doing this. And that was the last time I checked. He hasn't stopped. He said to me, people always look for a winning trader, but we're surrounded by losing traders. Apparently 90% of people are losing. So why the fuck is everybody looking for a winning trader to follow? Why don't you just find a cunt and fade them? Why does no one think to do the opposite? And I'm not talking about sentiment here. I'm not saying, oh, you know, 80% of the retail are long gold. I'm talking about finding someone that consistently loses money and doing the opposite of them. Uh, when I was on forums back in the day, people always used to complain about brokers and saying they spike prices. And they said, I keep getting stopped out and losing money. And I would open accounts with those brokerages because I knew if they were spiking them, I could make money, you know, because there'd be unfair spiking. The market spikes down 90 pips. I'm going to come in and buy it. And I made a lot of money, particularly with one broker. I made tens of thousands doing that, which paid for my education. Um, but anyway, off me and, and back to this guy, there was a service, a scam service, and it was called Trading Elite Club. You can Google it. Anyway, it was a proper scam service. The guy was a losing trader charging whatever he was doing his ass. Go on the forums. Everybody is complaining about this guy saying he's a fucking scammer. $100 a month. He loses money. I've looked at his trades. He's consistently down. And they're asking for a refund and going on Forex Peace Army and complaining. You know what this guy did? He emailed the trader. Is there a discount if I pay you for six months up front? I shit you not. As everyone's fleeing and writing complaints online, he paid the guy God knows how much money and made tens of thousands of pounds off of him. Um, and it was quite a hilarious but extremely insightful experience watching it. Um, because again, the crowd, the herd, reacted completely the wrong way. Um, doing the obvious thing, hearing about the scam, complaining. Um, and this guy's thinking outside the box and he made a lot of money from it. Um, it's what you have to do in this game. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, thank you very much for listening to this webinar. And we will speak again soon.